What's going on, Robbie? All right, my man, so I've just had a chance to really look into these and I wanted to give you some insight on things that I'm seeing. Like obviously, we spoke a lot that morning on how you work through the golf ball, how that left leg kind of initiates things. And I'm going to be mentioning that without question in terms of one of the key aspects here, but I, I wanted to, to kind of give you a full oversight on things. Okay, so you know when, when looking at golf swings, a lot of the initial stuff is really sort of watching how the takeaway works, and, and that's kind of a good reference point. Being able to look at how your body moves relative to this golf ball. And I'm gonna try and, to the best of my ability, draw just where this was shot from. I think that's going to be roughly straight through there. Okay, that's fine. Looking at from golf ball going vertical, how the body works relative to that ball position. Okay, so first off, we'll talk about the down the line. So the setup looks really solid. All your lines are fairly square from toes to knees to hips to elbows to shoulders. Everything looks really good. As you get the club moving, and man, that's a good looking golf club. As you get it moving, it starts to work a little bit inside, which you're probably aware of. Okay, so you know that's that's one sort of aspect that you could start working with is just trying to feel as though that club head tracked more straight back or even potentially you could feel like it works slightly more outside, okay? Because it is of benefit to be able to keep the club head working a little bit more outside where those hands are. So just thinking of where this club head moves versus where the hands are, we'd much rather see as this sort of works up here, we'd much rather see a pattern where it was like hands here and that club head were probably a little bit more kind of in that sort of a spot there, okay? so. For you to be able to achieve that, I think that that would be achieved going back over to this red arrow here, kind of just feeling like things work a little bit more outside off the start, and, and you'd probably be able to hammer that one through fairly easy. Okay, so continuing from there, I do have something that I want to make mention to you with how you're moving within your lower body in the backswing. Okay, and I think that this thing would from a ball striking perspective, really, really open up a lot of positive doors for you. Okay, so when we when we look at things from the face on viewpoint, and we get real specific in terms of how you're moving through that right leg, what you'll see from the face on is that you, you do have a little bit of a shift. Now, a lot of guys do this, a lot like Rory does this, Stenson does this very iconically as well little bit of a pressure shift into that trail foot before the club starts to move back. So that sort of a trigger is okay. But what I, I always wanna look at is how far the player moves off the golf ball. Now, I'd say you are okay in this category. I would not say that based off of that little pressure shift that you did, I would not say that you continued to shift off the golf ball with your lower half you sort of stabilized and planted that right side, so you did not sway off of it. Saying that, what I would like to see you do more of, it's really, if we look specifically at, you think of your body as a skeleton and that, that thigh bone, so that femur, and then we've got sort of two bones that run through the shins, okay? We can just call those the shins. That structure through that right leg Okay, the knee is at address, the knee is in flexion. Okay, this is part of our athletic posture. As we work back in the backswing, we want to be going into more extension through that leg. And as you can see there, yours is virtually unchanged. Okay, so as you get all the way to your top position, your right leg has basically done nothing from a flexion extension standpoint. So. What, what we want to be doing for you to be able to use the ground effectively, for you to be able to work into your right hip in the way that we would want you to, we would need you to go from that state of flexion, okay, that little, little bend in the knee, and as you work back in the backswing, progressively, so this isn't like just an instant thing, but progressively I'd want that leg to straighten more. I wouldn't want it necessarily to become a dead straight board, but I want you to be able to get to the point that you feel like it's about 80% straight, 
okay? You've still got maybe a hint of bend in it, but it's fairly straight. What this will do is it will really help you to rotate a lot more through your pelvis, okay? It'll, it'll free up the pelvis probably by 15 to 20 degrees from a turn standpoint. And, and that will give you some newfound power, okay? But it, probably more importantly, it will just improve how you're able to, and again, this may sound vague, but it's the ability to use the ground, okay? The ability to exchange force with the ground to move the body in a better mechanical way. And it may sound complicated, but really, the knees are designed, hopefully they're designed to change flex in the swing. Okay, so in the back swing, if you look what your left knee does, your left knee goes from its address position and it becomes more flexed. This is good, this is what we do need to have happen. So as this is happening, as that left knee is gaining flex, we would need the right knee to work in the opposite way. Okay, so if that right knee extends more or pulls back more and straightens a touch, you will move through your pelvis in the way that we're designed to. Okay, so that's a big opportunity for you. Okay, and, and that's, that's one thing that I wanted to make sure that you, you had in your awareness bank, just because that would be something in terms of like getting that backswing really, really right on the money, is that I'd be working on those two pieces, trying to keep that club head working a bit more outside so that it did not work you know, behind your hands, it's sort of say just in front of the hands, and then trying to pair that with really trying to get that right leg to work and, and work away from the golf ball, straighten more to get the use of the ground, get the pelvis moving the way that you needed to. Okay, so that, that would get you set up into a position at the top. I don't think that your arms would change at all. I think that the arms would look identical. I just think that you, we would see a straighter looking right leg. We'd see maybe kind of more that type of a shape. We would see a little bit more gap between your knees, okay, which would be very healthy. And I think I think you'd feel really good from there, okay? Once you got up to there, then you'd be able to, because you had used the ground better in the backswing, I think you will start to really work through a lot better. And you, I think that you'll be able to do some of that stuff that we talked about, this idea of, of using the ground, getting this left leg to sort of rotate out of the way, okay? But like, as I told you, like, you can see your sort of signature move in that transition, okay? You go from this structure, okay, this width. And as you start to change direction, you widen, okay? You, you go from a certain point of call it leverage, right? If we're, if we're talking leverage, we're just talking in terms of like angles. And we would say that, okay, from there to there, this angle, okay, it starts to change as you work into your transition. But what you do really well is that as you get down in here, you retain everything that you had. And you've got a brilliant right arm position right here. It's tucked in there really well. You've got a good strong left arm position here. I think that this is kind of one of the greatest things that you do right there. So that's that's really good. And you can, you know, you've probably trained a lot to be able to achieve that stuff. And you know, obviously you've retained that coming in. You've got great wrist angles coming into that golf ball. So I think that you've got a pretty good handle on on how you need to use your arms. Okay. I think that they work really, really well. I think the main thing is really just getting the lower body to help you. Okay. And you know this, this stuff that I've talked about over here in terms of that backswing, by using the ground more in the backswing and kind of using the torque that you've created, I think it's going to become a lot more logical for you to, to feel what's necessary with this left leg to get things, because what, you know, I, I've, I've worked on this sort of stuff with a crazy, crazy number of guys. What we're intending to do in terms of working through in the downswing, we have an opportunity to use force in three different ways. Okay, we can and we should. We should have some element of lateral shift. We should have some element of rotational 
movement. And we should uh, do a combination of pushing down and then moving up. So there's a vertical component as well. Okay, so four, there's, there's, three, there's three sort of directions. We've got the, the lateral, the rotational, and the vertical. When you start moving through here, you're absolutely moving to the target. So you've got that, that lateral motion taking place. You've got a little bit of the, of the vertical where it looks like, you know, your body's been nice and tall to the top of the backswing. You start working into the legs and then you're going to push off the ground. So you see, you see the lower body's getting taller as you're going through there. There's the vertical. I think that the rotational one is going to be the big one for you. Okay. That, that's one that you can probably capture more. All right. So what I would say is the best return of your time at the moment is getting the backswing stuff dialed in. Get that to a point where you can guarantee that that club head is working outside the hands, okay, and through there, clean that up, okay, keep the club head outside the hands through there, work on getting that right leg to a straighter position where you can start to see more of a window between the knees, okay, that'll make the hips really feel like they've turned. Once you've got that kind of checked off, my guess is that you're really going to start feeling the ground in a different way, and as a result of that new feeling, you're going to start having a new ability to be able to work with what you do here, okay? What you do to be able to get that leg moving, to get that motion started, to, to really clear that left side and open the body up, okay? So, hope that this makes sense and doesn't confuse you, but just gives you some clarity. I know we talked about a lot of things, but sometimes you just gotta take that, um, that path just to be able to, to clear everything up. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and I'm always available to chat. Talk to you soon, bud.